so ladies and gentlemen, this example, now what we're going to be moving on into is to multiplying. All right? Um, ladies and gentlemen, when we are multiplying, all right, I want you guys to kind of think of this. A lot, our operations with radicals are very similar to our operations with polynomials. All right? So if I was going to multiply 2x times 3x, just the same, if I was going to multiply 2x times 3x, just like we would multiply polynomial or these two monomials, I'd multiply 2 times 3, which is 6, and I'd multiply x times x, which is x squared. Right? The exact same thing is going to be with our radicals. 2 times 3 would be 6, and then our square root of 3 times 8. Now, before I get into that, what I would recommend before you get into multiplying um, radicals is always simplify your answer. So can we simplify the square root of 3? No. Can we simplify the square root of 8? Yes. yes. So simplify your answer before we get into it. Times 3 times. This can be square root of 4 times 2. Do we know what the square root of 4 is? OK. Then 3 times 2 is 6, so I have 2 square root of 3 times 6 square root of 2. Then when we're multiplying, you guys can just arrange this any way you want to, but it's going to be 12. 3 times 2 is the square root of 6. It's very, very important for you to write this down or to understand it. When multiplying or dividing radical, radicals, you can apply your operations to your radicands, which is the number 3 and 2. You can multiply and divide those numbers. Doesn't matter. You can multiply 3 times 2 inside the radicand. That's fine. But adding and subtracting, we cannot do that unless they're exactly the same. All right? And we'll talk about that as we get to it. But just notice, I can multiply 3 times 2. Now, can I simplify the square root of 6 anymore? No. So that would be my final answer. OK, Austin? Okay. So from